this is the first lesson in uh, the mechanics course so uh, hopefully this will be a quick introduction uh, taking you you know through the starting of the course some of the basics uh, and then from next lesson we will go uh, straight in um so just a reminder this is a full course you have a for every lesson you have a video worksheet and then solutions and then at the end i will do topical solutions uh by video that will come out very soon as well and i've divided the course um into specific topics in a specific order so it's not following a certain textbook it is following an order that i have devised through my years in in teaching with cambridge and looking at what would be the best order uh, for anyone to go through the course and that's how it's been designed and so let's get straight into it we will start off with constant uh, acceleration uh, this is the first topic which usually gets taught probably um, the easiest topic in in your course and should be very quick to go through so i'll quickly introduce um, constant acceleration for let's say maybe five or ten minutes and by the way this is an introduction lesson so there's no worksheet for this um, but from next lesson we'll go straight in with examples with questions solutions and so on right so constant um, acceleration basically means you're traveling at the same acceleration throughout the journey you can let's assume you're traveling at an acceleration of three for the whole journey now if you think about it in in real life that's pretty much never going to happen um even if a car is on auto drive at the same speed realist realistically it is still moving a very very slight amount which affects its uh, acceleration so constant acceleration is a model which we use on paper to get some concepts understood and then we go to real life situations where acceleration is varying, it's changing. But um, quickly introduce you to constant acceleration. Uh, there are five values or variables which will which we will use throughout constant acceleration. Uh, they are called your SUVAT values, S-U-V-A-T. You have probably heard them before in your school or in your teacher or whatever you've read. If you have some sort of mechanics knowledge, even with physics, they use these values. So S, U, V, A, and T, all of them are very, very important. Uh, one thing that people don't realize is all of them can be positive or negative, except for time. You know, time is obviously going to be positive. You cannot have negative 10 seconds, right? So time will always be... Uh, positive the rest can be um, positive or negative depending on the situation which direction you are traveling what other assumptions you've made in your models and so on and um, all of these you've seen before now just a quick overview um displacement and distance are similar but different and i will come on to that on the next page so don't do not worry about that uh, velocity is the same as speed but velocity we also consider direction right so that's the only difference uh, speed can be only positive velocity on the other hand can be both positive and negative because we take into account the direction which is so so important in in everything surrounding mechanics the direction is everything it influences all your calculations um so yeah make sure you have that written down all of these values need to be in the si units uh, when doing our calculations at the start i will have all of them with the units uh, but as we do go through the course we will have to make some conversions to make sure they are in the right they are in the right si units before you do the calculations so um, time has to be in seconds and displacement has to be in uh, meters and now velocity and acceleration are all obviously um, 
something you don't have to worry about with the units because they follow on from these two, right? So if your displacement is in meters and time is in seconds, then your velocity automatically will be meters per second, right? So you don't have to worry about velocity and acceleration. Just make sure that time and displacement are in the SI units, which are seconds and uh, meters. Now, one thing with constant acceleration is you always have to choose a positive direction, okay? And this is really important when we work out whether any of our SUVAT values are positive or negative. <clears throat> Okay, so you choose a positive direction and everything opposite the positive direction will be negative, right? So if I say um, my positive direction is to the right, but a car is traveling to the left, the speed of the car will be, the velocity of the car will be negative. And we will come on to that. So this is just to introduce you. Now, well, I'm going to start off with horizontal motion, which means objects moving right or left, right? Now, in horizontal motion, we take right as the positive direction most of the time. Okay? And this is standard for calculations. Um, when it comes to vertical motion, that's when it gets slightly tricky. Okay, So, for example, a ball is thrown up. That's when the directions can be slightly confusing. The easiest thing to do is to select the initial direction Initial means starting, right? So select the starting direction of the object as your positive direction, right? So if I say a ball is thrown up, then you take that as your positive. Easy. If I say something is thrown down, then you take down as positive. If something is falling to the ground, it's going down, right? So then you take down as the positive direction. But at the moment, we're dealing with horizontal, so we say that right is uh, positive. Now, this is why positive is is um, is so important, and I'll explain the displacement concept here as well. <clears throat> right, this is horizontal motion, right, left and right. So we take um, right as the positive direction, as you can see in the at the top, the arrow is going to the right. So right is our positive. Now, this affects your velocity and your displacement. Now, you see this is the origin here, the O. Now, because I've taken right as positive, everything to the left of O will be negative displacement. Okay, so if I look at the object P, the distance is four meters from O. Okay, But because my positive direction is to the right and P is opposite direction, it's to the left of O, then P, your will displacement, which is S, will be negative 4. Okay. For Q, Q is on the right of O. Now, our positive is to the right, so our distance, which is 3 meters, will be a positive displacement. Right, so that's displacement and... Um, Distance now coming on to the velocity right now. This is the starting velocity of both objects P is 2.5 meters per second and uh, Q is 6 Meters per second. Don't worry about the units at the moment. Just consider the numbers okay. Now have a look at P P is traveling uh, Speeding to the right. It's traveling to the right now our positive direction is also to the right so because they are both in the same direction, your velocity is positive. And now let's come on to Q. Q is traveling at 6 meters per second, but it's going to the left. right? Our positive is to the right. Q is traveling in the opposite direction, which is to the left. And because of that, your velocity becomes negative. <clears throat> and now this is where displacement is really important and you need to understand why it's different to distance okay now let's say you have an object it starts over here goes all the way there 15 uh, let's say 15 meters and then comes back 
to the end. Now the distance it's traveled is 30, right? Because it went there 15 and then 15 back, which is 30. But is that the same as the displacement? Your displacement is the position. Okay, displacement is the position change. How much has the position changed between start and end? Okay, now, if you think about it, I started over here, which is zero, and I ended over here. So my position is exactly the same. I haven't moved left or right. It's exactly the same. So my displacement is actually zero because my start and end are in <clears throat> exactly the same place. Um, in case you're confused by the vertical, this is not vertical. We are just considering the horizontal motion. The reason I've left this gap is just to show you it's going there and back. In actual essence, what's happening is it goes there and then back again to here. Yep. So your displacement is zero because you're starting and ending at the same position. Now, let's look at the second example here. Mm -hmm. You go right by 5 and then left by 20. So your distance is 25 because you did 5 right and then 20 left. So your distance is 25. What's your displacement? Right now, this is interesting. This is your starting point. Okay. What's my position compared to the starting point, my ending position? Right. How much have I moved from start to end? So five there, and all of that is 20, right? If I do 20 minus five, that gives me. 15. Yep. So again, displacement is the difference between starting and ending. So I started at the origin O and I ended there, which is 15 to the left. So you would say that my displacement is 15. But that's not true because we also consider the direction, right? We all, uh, we've taken right as the positive and my ending point is to the left of my origin, which was at the start. Okay. Because I'm ending to the left, which is opposite the positive direction, my displacement would be negative 15. And one more thing that's really important is that you only consider situations, you only make diagrams, you only make a model based on what the question has given you. Do not make your own assumption, right? Don't say a car stopped or a car started at rest or anything like that. Just look at the question, what it's given you, and take that to be your model, right? So this question is simple. Car A. Sorry, not car A. A car is at point A, and it goes to point B. Your speed here was 2 ms. And your speed here was 6 ms. Okay, now going back to your SUAT. Uh, U is your starting velocity. V is your final velocity. Right, so it starts at A. So this is your U. Okay, and it ends at B, so that's your V, final velocity. Okay, it's going from A to B. Usually you take positive as your right, okay? And both of U and V will be positive because it's going to the right. Okay? That is your model. That's all we know. That's all we draw. That's all we take into account. That is all we label. Don't do anything extra. Don't say the car stopped or when it started, it was at stop. Nothing like that. This is what you've got. Okay, so only model with what you've given. <coughs> and the last part, we are finally here. These are your SUAT uh, formulae. 
have five formulas, uh, all of which are very useful. Some of these are in your formula sheet, depending on which exam board you are doing and depending on which year's syllabus you are following. So confirm that with your exam board. Um, a quick Google on your exam board specification will give you that information. But these are your five formulas. Write them down. You will use them a lot, a lot, a lot. And yes, we are at uh, the end. I'll quick quickly give you a quick overview. So the way you use these formulas are you look at what information you've been given and what's missing, and then you make a list and see which formula fits in. So let's say in a question they have told you the final velocity, the acceleration, and the time, right? And they are asking you to find your initial velocity, which is you. So this formula works perfectly because you will substitute V, A, and T and then rearrange it to find you. Okay. So you look at the information given, what's missing, and which formula fits all of those values. Right, we are going to stop there. This is your intro to constant acceleration. There's no worksheet for this specific topic, but from next, for this specific video, I meant, but from the next video, you will have uh, worksheet solutions given in the description. Make sure you follow it thoroughly, start to end. Mechanics is all practice. Practice, practice. See you soon.